Hallelujah. If you know you have something to shout about, come on, shout now. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout this morning. If you know you have something to shout about, we have the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost promised by our Father. And by Him we can do all things. Hallelujah. Somebody excited in the house this morning? Just give the Lord a shout this morning. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we know that your presence is mighty in our midst this morning. We thank you, Father, because you have brought your word to us. We thank you because you are mindful of us. We thank you because you have kept us for another Father's Day this year, 2021. We give you praise, Lord. We give you thanks. We appreciate you, King of Kings. We bless you, mighty God. For we cannot do anything without you. By ourselves, we are limited. But with you, Holy Ghost, there are no limitations. We pray that you reign in our lives, reign in our midst. We pray that you speak your word to us this morning. And our lives should never remain the same. In the name of Jesus. I know you are here. Here in your power. I know you are here. Sweet Holy Spirit. I know you are here. You are here to bring revival. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here. Here in your power. I know you are here. Sweet Holy Spirit, I know you are here. You are here to turn our lives around. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit, Jigidem. Oh, yeah, when Jesus, Jigidem, Oh, yeah, when Jesus, Jigidem, also I want the men to sing the song. Guys,
I'm not going to take our time this morning. I have just limited time to minister to us this morning. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will do what he knows best to do. And I pray that the Lord will speak to every one of us. And every one of us that need this word today. Hallelujah. I'm going to be taking our text from 1 Samuel 2, 27 to 31. And I just want to thank uh, God for this opportunity to minister to us this morning. I want to thank Pastor. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate you, ma. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel 2, 27, 21, uh, to 31. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And I did choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an effort before me. And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice? And at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation. And honorest thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, and there shall not be an old man in, in thy house. Somebody say, God forbid. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. So this account was the account of Eli. Eli the priest. In the house of God. And this morning I'm going to be talking to us briefly about a topic says revival in our homes. Today we're celebrating Father's Day. And, and Father's Day, you know, brings us back to our, our role as fathers. And this message is not just for the fathers. It's for every one of us. And every aspiring father. And everyone who has a family. And every one of us here today, we are from a family. And we have a family. Praise the Lord. We are privileged to be also part of God's family. Why do we need revival? I'm going to read First Peter 2, 5 to 9. 5 and 9. Before I continue. First Peter 2, 5 and 9. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We need revival so that our spirit can be aligned with the purpose of God. We need revival so that we can grow in Christ. In Isaiah 57, 15, Isaiah 57, 15, For thus yet the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy places, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. The, the purpose of God is to make our heart aligned with him. And God wants to revive our heart. He wants to revive our spirit. We need revival in this time, in this season. We need revival so that the devil will not mess with our lives and our families. We need revival so that we can hear instructions from God. We can hear God clearly. Isaiah 30, 21, it says, 
He says, you hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. We need revival so that we can hear the voice of God, so that we can hear instruction, so that we'll not walk in darkness. Hallelujah. What are the signs that we need revival? When we have become complacent and feel everything is just normal, that is when we realize that we need revival in our lives. And the example that I'm going to be citing is in Isaiah chapter 1, in, in 1 Samuel, talking about, in 1 Samuel, hallelujah. Please don't be distracted. In 1 Samuel, we're going to be reading in 1, 1 verse 8, 1 Samuel 1, 8, praise the Lord. The account of Elkanah. We saw that Elkanah is the husband of Anna. How many of us remember Anna in the Bible? Then said Elkanah, her husband, to Anna, Why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? Elkanah, the husband of Anna, just felt that it's okay. I mean, you don't have any child. That's fine. There's nothing wrong. Why we pass down? When we become complacent, we are just so okay with our situation. We are just okay with the adverse situation and thinking is normal. That, that was the position of Elkanah. Number two reason, sign that you need revival is when we lose spiritual insight. Elkanah was referred to in that same 1 Samuel 1.3. That same chapter, 1 Samuel 1, 3. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and sacrifice unto the Lord God, Lord of hosts in Shiloh. So Elkanah was someone who goes to church. He goes to church. He doesn't miss it. Every year he attends church. He goes to worship God. But something that was lacking in Elkanah was spiritual insight. He did not realize that Samuel was supposed to come out of his loins. He did not realize that a prophet was meant to be born out of him. He did not realize that there, was, there is a destiny that is attached to him and Anna. So he became complacent. He said, why weepest thou? Why grievest thou? Am I not better to thee? Fathers, God did not make you a father just for you to be a father alone. God has made you a father because there are destinies attached to you. Because there are destinies attached to your life. And they can be your children, they can be your family members, they can even be the people that you are congregating. God did not make you a father just so that you are okay with yourself. Or just okay with where you are, your position right now. We need to go back to God and begin to seek the face of God and know what more that you have made me for. Hallelujah. And if only Elkanah knew, if only Elkanah pressed forward. Tell me, what if Hannah did not press? What if Hannah did not go ahead and make a vow? What if Hannah did not cry and cry unto the Lord? And I know that's why we have women. Yes, we have our wives. They are support system. But we cannot afford to just sit still and let things pass us by. Praise the Lord. And um, Samuel came from that family. Praise the Lord. So when we have those signs of complacency, of, you know, just, you know, it's okay. We need revival. Number three signs that we need revival. When the center is no longer holding, when we have lost grip over our territory, we have lost our priesthood, we have lost our authority, we, have lo we, have, we are not mindful of our environment, of the things that happen around us. When, our, when, we, when we have lost touch, praise the Lord, that's a sign that we need revival. When things begin to happen around you, in your family, in your home, and you cannot place your hands on anything, or you cannot even understand why, is a sign that we need revival. The Lord has not made us to just be like that. 
there is a destiny that God has put into your hands to manage. There are destinies that are attached to your life that you have to manage. So, when the center is no longer holding, when you no longer, you, be, you feel that you're losing authority in your home, you cannot understand why your children are going haywire or things are going wrong, there is need for revival. When we cannot be the example that our children should emulate, that's a sign that we need revival. Our lives as parents must influence our children so much that they begin to reverence God even through our lives. One thing I remember so much about my father, I, I, I just remember the picture of seeing him on his knees every time praying. I remember the picture of seeing him reading his Bible. I remember when he's clapping and singing by himself during devotion and all the children are dozing off. But those things are seed that he sold, he sold as a father. And I can never forget those things. What are the things that, you are, that your children are emulating from you? What are the examples that you are showing them? Thank God Pastor talked about example during uh, the, the presentation. And I felt like, well, all the message has been preached. Sister Joy too was talking uh, during the prayer meeting. Thank you for that powerful prayer. It, it was just like when Elijah said, prepare the, the sacrifice and all the water was being poured. And I know that the Lord will release fire into our lives today. On those sacrifices or prayers that have been made for our fathers. May the Lord give us the fire that we need to become real fathers indeed in our homes. I pray for our fathers today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is time for our fathers to arise. You have been doing your best. You have been doing so much. And I must say that really we have fantastic fathers in our midst. But there is more that God wants you to do. There is more that God wants you to do. There is more that God wants you to do. Eli failed. He failed God. He was a prophet. He was a priest in the house of God. But his children did not follow the way of God. And God said he, he, that Eli refused to talk to his children. You know, sometimes we feel like, oh, we've done enough. We're doing so much. But we need to ask God. When things are going bad, we need to take authority in our homes. We need to ask God what we're supposed to do. And don't overlook those things. Children are God's heritage. And we cannot afford to lose ground over our territory. Praise the Lord. When you dwell in your past and you lose hope. And you think that I can't be the role model that my children need. Or I can't be that father that they want to be. Or oh, my parents failed. My parents did not role model me properly. But you can do it. Because what? The Bible says you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Praise the Lord. It's time for us to roar back at the things that are roaring at our families. It's time for us to take over our territory and make sure that we're fulfilling destiny, fulfilling God's purpose for our children. Many times, I, you know, you, you probably receive words concerning your family, concerning your home. But what's happening now? Are you still hearing from God? Is God? Has God told you about the future of your children? Has he told you what, this, who, what who will become or what they will not become? Or the challenges that your children will face? That is why we cannot afford to sit back. And let things just happen in our lives, in our family. We need to take authority, take charge. And begin to seek the face of God for the lives of our children. And those who are not yet married, this is the time for you to begin to seek the face of God. About your future. About your destiny. About the things that God wants you to do. What, what God wants you to accomplish. Praise the Lord. And we cannot do these things without the help of the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that walketh in you both to will and to do. It's the Holy Ghost that refreshes you, that opens your mind up, that opens your heart, that makes you to hear God clearly. It's not by power, 
The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. When we seek God and ask God for the help of the Holy Spirit, we must understand that the altar of the family needs to keep burning. The altar of the family needs to be on fire. The family needs to pray together. The family needs to read the word. Praise the Lord. Your atmosphere is very important. The atmosphere in the family, the atmosphere in the home, your atmosphere in your surrounding, in your place of work, even where you live, it's very, very important that as, family, as families, as fathers, you are in charge and the territory understand that somebody ruling in this place. I don't know what Obedidom did when the ark of God got into his house. But he knew what to do so that the ark of God becomes a blessing to him and his family and his household. When Uzzah touched the ark of God and he got struck, I, I was I reading that scripture and I'm like, why? But remember the ark had been in the house of Abinadab, which is Uzzah's father. Before they took it and they were taking it back to Israel, to back to, you know, you know, they were taking it back to, to Israel. And, and just U as Uzzah was about to touch that ark, he got struck and he died. God is not a wicked God. You go to church, it's not enough. If we're doing things that displeases God, we will get punished for it. Only God knows what has been happening in the house of Abinadab. And that judgment came on his son. As fathers, we are shielded over our families. We are sh God has made you a head over that home. I've never seen in the scripture, if there's any place you can tell me, where God blamed the failure in the families on the woman. I've never seen it. I don't know if there's any. He blamed Eli. And he, he said what? That he's going to cut them off. And there will not be any old man in the house of Eli. We need to seek the face of God and know what to do so that the ark of God the altar of God that we profess, the word of God that we confess that we know will not be a curse unto us like it was unto Abinadab. Obedidom kept the ark of God. He knew what to do. He was praising. He was worshiping. He carried his family along and they were blessed for that three months that the ark of God was in their home. What are we doing that is displeasing God? What is that thing that we do in our homes or in our lives? Because if the edge is broken, the serpent will bite. As fathers, we need to brace up. We need to rise up. Do more. Seek the face of God. Seek the help of the Holy Spirit. So that we can fulfill our destinies as fathers. Because God will ask us. Those that he has put in our care. He's going to ask us. God will ask every man. For that woman he put in your life. For that ch the children he has put in your life. So it's not about paying school fees. It's not about taking care of them. What is your spiritual ground over those children, over your family? Are your eyes open enough to see what is going around, in, going on in your territory? If our eyes are not open, we need revival. If things can just happen around us, we need revival. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to us. If God spoke to you about your child just when he was born, how about now that he's 10 years old? Yeah. 
What are you watching over in that life of that child? If he spoke to you only when he was one year old, two years old, he, will, he, he needs to keep speaking to you over that child till that child is grown. Because that way you'll be able to channel, the, you'll be able to know what to do, how to pray for your family, for your children. We need revival in our homes. Today, children can just tell lies. They can just do some wonderful, you know, act some wonderful behaviors. We did all that when we were growing up. But if we knew God so much more, the way we knew God now, we know God now, at that time, our lives would have been better. We would have really gone far with God. And that is why we need to rise up to the challenge. There is hope. You can still do it. You can still assume that priesthood over your home, over your family. You can let the devil know that you are in charge here. Your atmosphere determines the results that you see. And if the devil knows that he can just do anything around you, there is trouble. We need revival in our homes. Let your atmosphere be charged up with the presence of God. Let your atmosphere be charged up with fire. That even, peop- even your child wants to tell a lie, he will be tremble to even say that lie. In the presence of God, sin bows. Our home should be a place where the power of God dwells. I remember sometime when I was growing up and one of my cousins told me the, the evil plan that he had against my brother. And I was wondering, why is he telling me? The spirit of God in you should make wickedness to bow. When things want to go wrong, because the spirit of God and the power of God is present in your home, there's no way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will help us today. Psalm 114, verse Psalm 114, 1 to 8. Talking about charging up our atmosphere and making sure that our homes are conducive. Our home is a place of prayer. Our home is a place of power. Our home is a place where the power of God dwells. Our home is a place where demons cannot penetrate. It's doable. The Bible says in Psalm 114, when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel is dominion. Your home is a sanctuary. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains kicked like rams, and the little hills like lambs. What ail thee, O thou sea, that thou fledest, thou Jordan, that thou was driven back? Ye mountains that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble thou at at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Situations should tremble because there is power in your life. Because there is power in your home. Because you speak with authority as a father. Hallelujah. Mountains should skip like ramps. Hallelujah. It's only by the help of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says in Isaiah 55. That those who are testy should come. 
those who are thirsty for the grace, for the power of the Holy Spirit to make your home that desired home that you really want God to make it. Ho, oh, everyone that tasted, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye. Come to the waters. Let the Lord be the head of your home. Let his presence be felt around you. Let his presence be felt in the lives of your children. Praise the Lord. May our children not be like the children of Eli. May we not fail God. May he give our father strength to carry on the mantle of authority in our homes. Fathers, you are not in competition with anybody. You are the head of that home. You are a shield over your wife, over your children. When the children are going bad and you know... It's not violence. There is a power behind that behavior. And you need to address that power. You need to address that authority, that spirit behind those things that you don't like in your home. You need to speak it. Speak the word of God. Stand. Take your stand. Take authority. The Lord has made you head. He has given you power. May you know what it is that will be did on deed for his home to prosper. May God give us wisdom. May God open our spirit up. So that we don't begin to run after things that are not our problems. When we walk with God, when we allow his spirit to reign over our lives, over our homes, we begin to see miracles. We begin to see signs and wonders. Our children will become testimonies and we'll be happy that we allowed God to reign and rule over our homes. Praise the Lord. Is anyone blessed this morning? Hallelujah. As you let the Holy Spirit in your home, in your life, may the power of God be felt in your home. May people see your home and want to be like you. May, the, may wickedness run far from your home. Evil will keep like ram when they come near you or your children. And they know that we can't penetrate here. The angel told Daniel, he said, the prince of Persia withstood me. I don't know that prince that is withstanding you from becoming the authority that you should be in the spirit in your home. Today, we're going to call on the Holy Spirit. And I don't know areas that you have failed before and you feel that you don't have strength to go on. Some our fathers have left our children to, okay, let the children follow their mother. I'm okay. I know I cannot make I can't be the father that they want to be. That's a lie of the devil. Rise up to the occasion. Because if you break the edge, the serpent will bite. You cannot afford to open the door for the enemy to take over your territory. This morning we're going to rise on our feet. And is anybody here tonight, today? You need to make your ways right with God. It says, come, everyone that tasted. Everyone, come to the waters. Come to the waters. God can still change your home. He can still make things right. If only you let him. Eli failed God and he didn't make his way right. Because he could not hold any longer at the center. I don't know that situation in your family. And you think it's over. It's not over. The Lord is here to release strength unto you. To take up your mantle. 
as the head of the home. Lift up your voice and begin to appreciate the Lord this morning. Father, thank you for a second chance. As many who want to rededicate themselves to God and say, Father, I'm sorry if I failed you as a father. If I failed in any way. Sometimes we limit God in our mind, in our thinking. God has made our fathers representative of him right here on earth, in our homes. And you need to come to God and say, Father, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to be an example of Eli. I don't want to be an example that fails. Have your way, Jesus. And I want you to lift up your voice and begin to call on the Holy Spirit to help you. You cannot do it by yourself. The reason we struggle is because we want to do it by ourselves. We trust in ourselves. We trust in our power. We trust in our words. In our actions. Strictness. It's not about being strict. It's about allowing the Holy Spirit to be the head of your home. Where love rules. When the Spirit of God rules over our hearts, we will begin to understand the reason why things are happening around us. Why things are happening in the lives of our children. When you see some traits, you will understand why those traits are there. And you address them in the place of prayer. Father, we call on you today. We ask that you revive our homes we ask for revival. We ask for revival. Let the Spirit of God begin to move in our lives. Father, you are the unseen God. Revive our homes. Revive thy works in the midst of the years. For the homes that are failing. For things that are going wrong in our lives. Father, we ask that your Spirit will begin to rule over our lives. That our fathers will begin to depend on you again. Father, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We will not fail you, Jesus. We will not fail you, Jesus. We will not fail you, Lord. Father, we enthrone you over our lives, over our homes. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, we enter on you. We proclaim. 